Tonight, a state lawmaker is accused of derailing Washington State's social equity cannabis program. Facing the races, P.J. Randawa has the investigative report that reveals how Representative Melanie Morgan took steps to silence BIPOC business owners. Representative Melanie Morgan was the chair of the state's Social Equity and Cannabis Task Force, a group formed to repair some of the lasting impacts of the war on drugs on the BIPOC community by making the cannabis licensing process more equitable. Over the past year, she's been the subject of a workplace misconduct investigation commissioned by the State House of Representatives. Last year, a staffer on the task force accused Morgan of abusive and bullying behavior. The state commissioned a Seattle law firm to investigate those claims of workplace misconduct they found Morgan took steps behind the scenes to silence members of the public who opposed her. I take it she's talking about me. Mike Asai has been keeping close tabs on the Social Equity Task Force since its creation in 2020. It makes me, uh, you know, a little sad. He has a lot at stake. We're fighting for the inclusion and we won't stop until we see proper inclusion. Formerly one of the first medical cannabis retailers in downtown Seattle, Asai has been trying to get a new cannabis retail license from the state for the past six years. Currently, there are no black-owned cannabis dispensaries in the city of Seattle, and many have accused the task force of not moving quickly enough to give BIPOC entrepreneurs access to cannabis licenses. What you have here is the illusion of inclusion and thinking you have a black representative that's for the black community, but it's the illusion. Asai was surprised to learn from the report about what Morgan was doing behind the scenes. We do have designated staff monitoring our Q&A box to make sure that those who sign up are able to speak as they come through. The report details how, despite pushback from staff, Morgan had the chat box shut down and removed from public online meetings, calling it a distraction. Do you feel like by shutting down the chat box, you were being silenced? Absolutely. It was a way for members of the public and people that were joining on the task force to communicate with each other. If you put something in the chat box, there was times where a staff member or someone could get you the information right away. When a staff member told Morgan that the community was losing trust in the committee and its work, according to the report, Morgan stated she did not need to give members of the public who were disgruntled airtime. Doing so, she said, would be a waste of time. You're a representative of the people. And if you represent the people, the people have the right to talk. You have the duty to listen to the people. Complaints against Morgan also include delaying the work of the task force. Former task force co-chair Paula Sardinas told us in a statement, Morgan would constantly cancel meetings to slow down our work. This happened repeatedly. What she did was magnify the trauma, and she needs to understand it and know that. We reached out to Representative Morgan, and in a statement, she called the report misleading, politically motivated, and incomplete. She says she has filed an appeal. In the meantime, the task force plans to Submit its final recommendations for social equity to the state legislature in early December. But keep in mind, it could still be years before entrepreneurs like Asai can apply for cannabis licenses under the social equity program. Everyone knows the brutality that's been done to black people when it, and brown when it comes to the war on drugs and the war on cannabis. For Facing Race, I'm PJ Randawa.